today in this video we will learn about ketu ketu as a planet what does it signify and how to strengthen your ketu remedy your ketu how to know whether your ketu is good or not in the planetary cabinet ketu indicates army rahu also indicates army so when rahu ketu are powerful and prominent in horoscope one will have an army behind them a large group of followers this is what should be understood first secondarily because rahu and ketu indicate army when they are powerful and positive and also connected to profession houses 10th house 10th lord 10th house from sun moon or ascendant or when they are connected to wealth houses second house second lord 11th house 11th lord it does indicate that one can either work in army police or will gain through army or police this is that should be understood apart from that ketu is also called shikhi that is a name for ketu shikhi means a someone with a shikha shikha is something that is kept by pandits you know a small hair is left on the behind of the skull so because ketu is called sikhi and sikha is related to hindu priests religiousness priesthood is also indicated by ketu being dharmic pursuing spiritual interests are also indicated by ketu apart from that ketu is also named as dhaja dhaja means flag when you become famous people become your flag bearer so fame is also indicated by ketu in fact i have seen that a positive and strong ketu gives you traits which makes other people talk good about you behind your back as if they are your flag bearers not only this regarding rahu and ketu i have told in previous video also that there is a lot of confusion people don't know how to decode rahu and ketu properly because of which they are not make they are not able to make good predictions i told in the previous video as well that a singular principle that rahu and ketu give results according to the planet they are conjoined with if they are not conjoined with any planet then they give result according to the planet who is aspecting them if no planet is aspecting them then they give result according to the rashi lord if more than one planet is conjoined with them or aspecting them then the most powerful planets result they give the same goes for ketu as well now one thing is there that if ketu is there with a planet you say ketu is there with you say mars then ketu behaves like mars so mars is conjoined with ketu it is mars mars right so mars becomes powerful and because ketu is dhaja also dhaja means flag which indicates height right flag is vertically put on the ground so if any planet goes with ketu because the because ketu is also going to behave like the same planet ketu strengthens the planet and i have seen that if there is any planet who is with ketu only with ketu not the aspecting planet or the rashi lord as such but any planet with ketu should be considered powerful the planet becomes prominent and major traits related to the significations of the planet related to the planet that i have covered in this series is present in the nature behavior character of the native not only this the rashi lord of the ketu because ketu is a flag is also very prominent should be considered as powerful and generally the house where ketu is situated in one axles in that house there are very prominent results related to that house which also leads us to conclude that if Ra if ketu is in the 3rd 6th 8th or 12th house then in that particular scenario because of 3rd house a lot of tensions and troubles because of 6th house lots of enmity and opposition because of 8th house lots of unfortunate events and because of 12th house huge losses will also be the case this is how ketu should be understood regarding color ketu indicates very irritated color so a sheet of cloth having polka dots or a mixture of a lot of different colors having stripes etc comes in the department of ketu donation of such clothes will improve ketu wearing such clothes will strengthen ketu using such clothes as curtains bed sheets etc in your home will also activate your ketu now you will have to make sure that you want to activate only planets which are beneficial 
So only when Ketu is beneficial, you should activate Ketu. Ketu will be beneficial when he is Vargottam. Ketu will be beneficial when he is with a planet who is beneficial because Ketu will give result like the planet he is with or the planet he is being expected by. So if Ketu is with an exalted planet, Ketu also behaves like exalted. If Ketu is expected by an exalted planet, Ketu also starts behaving like expected. Is what should be understood. And only when Ketu is beneficial, you will want to activate Ketu by wearing variegated clothes and by using variegated clothes in your home, bedroom, etc. Otherwise, if the Ketu is not beneficial, then you should pacify Ketu and for pacification, donation of variegated clothes is recommended. Right? One thing is there that in the previous video, I said that Rahu expects 5th, 9th and 12th house. And 7th house Rahu does not expect because Ketu is already situated there. In this particular scenario regarding the aspect of Ketu, because Ketu is not having a face, I don't take aspect for Ketu. This is one thing. Secondarily, if I take aspects for Ketu, there will be too many aspects in the zodiac, which is not true. So regarding the aspects of Ketu, I don't believe that Ketu have any aspect and any principle related to the aspect of Ketu does not work in practice. Aspects I don't take for Ketu. Apart from that, there, there is one more question that if there is any planet with Rahu and because Ketu is in seventh to it, that planet will be influencing Ketu as well. In this particular scenario, that planet, how will be the influence of that planet over Ketu? So if Ketu is already conjoined with a planet, Ketu will give result of the conjoining planet in this particular scenario. The result of the planet who is with Rahu expecting Ketu, the result will be nullified. If Ketu is alone and there is only a planet with Rahu, then the planet is with Rahu. Rahu is giving the result of planet and Ketu is being expected by the planet. Ketu is also giving the result of the same planet. So now this planet is in the house and the seventh to it at both the places. Otherwise also if a planet is expecting a house, you should take the planet as being situated in the house. So this is a normal principle. In any case, if there is a planet with Rahu who will be expecting Ketu as well because every planet has seventh aspect and there is one more planet who is expecting Ketu you say not by 7th aspect, but some special aspect, 5, 9 aspect for Jupiter, 3, 10 aspect for Saturn or 4, 8 aspect for Mars. In that particular scenario, the planet who is situated with Rahu will give result only to Rahu. And even if that planet is most powerful as compared to others, Ketu will give result of the other planet only, whose result Rahu is not taking, but only Ketu should take. So this is an exception with regard to Ketu that you will have to keep in mind. To pacify Ketu, the worship of Brahman is recommended. Now Brahman... Is not Brahma. Brahman is Param Brahm, the Supreme God. So we do some certain practices in order to realize God, such as meditation, self-contemplation, etc. Engaging in such spiritual activities strengthens Ketu. That is the first thing that should be understood. Apart from that, Brahman also indicates Kula Devata. If you don't know about your Kula Devata, then go to Sthana Devata. The Temple attracting largest number of devotees in your area nearby you, closest to you, will be the Sthan Devata. So worshipping the Sthana Devata and worshipping the Kula Devata should also be done for the pacification of Ketu to make Ketu positive. Because Ketu indicates Brahman, self-contemplation activities, reading Vedas, Puranas and Sastras because Ketu also indicates Pandits. Reading Vedas, Puranas, Sastras and other literature which makes you concentrate on yourself, focus on yourself, make changes in yourself is also a great remedy for Ketu. And not only this, in North India and South India, at both the places you will find temples related to Rahu Ketu. There also you can visit. Mansa, Goddess Mansa, being the mother of snakes, can also be benefitingly worshipped for the pacification of Rahu and Ketu. South India, Rahu Ketu temples, Nag temples, snake temples, you will find yourself. In Mahakaleshwar temple in Ujjain, I believe nearby there is a temple for snakes as well. So visiting Mahakaleshwar Jyotirling in Ujjain is also a very great remedy for Rahu Ketu. Nageshwar Jyotirling is also there. There also you can visit for Rahu and Ketu. And if it is not possible to visit, then you can search for their website. And I believe that they take online donations through website as well. So that you can do so to pacify your Rahu Ketu. Apart from that, regarding uh, Rahu Ketu, Rahu is considered as malefic. Ketu, I consider as benefic. Now, why I consider Ketu as benefic? This question is asked by a few people. Now, uh, how should I explain why I consider it benefic? The what answer people are expecting, I don't understand. Like, if I am telling you anything that is based on my experience, 
So in every horoscope that I have seen, and I am looking at horoscope since 12, 13 years, almost every horoscope is having Ketu. And I have judged the result of the planets. And generally when the consultation happens, I read the horoscope. I give some predictions to people regarding themselves, which come true. They say that, sir, exactly things are happening like this, etc., etc. In that analysis, I use planets in that I have used Ketu. There I have seen Ketu as giving beneficial results. I have told good results for Ketu, which people have said, yes, sir, this have happened. Future predictions I also do, and because I am doing it since last 12, 13 years, I have given future predictions to people for Ketu Dasha and for the result of the houses where Ketu is situated in. The results have also came out to be true. That I have done keeping in mind that Ketu is a beneficial planet. So when someone is like wanting, when someone is telling me, sir, why you take Ketu as a benefit, what, why I should explain? Should I take example of all the 8,000, 9,000 horoscopes I have seen and the predictions I have made and make a list out of it, which prediction I made, what analysis I do and explain it in the, in the video or what uh, you are expecting. I don't understand it well, right? If I am saying something that is coming from experience, that's a simple point. What have happened in the world of astrology nowadays? No, people are like there are immature astrologers, right? Amateur astrologers probably it is called, who don't know astrology. They have not learned traditionally. Now anything should be learned traditionally in that traditional knowledge should be learned traditionally. That's a point, right? Any traditional thing, Vedas, Sastras, etc. should be learned traditionally from a guru who have learned from a guru and who have practiced the science for some time. Now, nowadays, what have happened that 80-90% of people who are practicing astrology, in fact, teaching astrology also, they have not learned traditionally. Right? Either they have not turned, learned from a capable guru or they have not learned from a guru at all. Now, these people, what happened with these people that these people know a few logics, knowing nothing about logic. People think that anything you think is logical and you say that is logic, it is as useless as it can be. Right? Logic or you say nyai is also a Shastra like astrology and it have to be learned properly. In the philosophical exposition regarding Vedas and Puranas and Upanishads, when you go to the opinion of different scholars, there is something known as Pramana. Right? There is something known as Pramana. It, it's not like that someone will say and they will, someone will come and they will say something that they find, remember? They find it to be logical and people are supposed to believe it. This is not the thing. This is not how it happens, right? For example, if you go to Hinduism, if you go to Hindu philosophy, there are pramanas on which any logic is accepted. Specifically, when you talk about things such as Godhead, reality of knowledge, etc. No one has seen God. No one knows the knowledge. No one knows the truth. So you accept it by logic. So first thing is protection. If someone has seen it, then you believe. Then there is Anuman inference that if someone have inferred it because of some very solid reason, then it should be considered. Right. Then there is Upaman. By comparison, if something is proved, then it is taken. Next is Arthapatti. By postulation, by contemplation, if something is proved, then it is taken. Then there is Anupalabdi, that if one thing is because there is no other thing, then it is taken. Right? Then there is Shabd, authoritative words. For example, the first thing is Pratyaksh. If someone has seen God, we will accept that, okay, there is God. So that is Pratyaksh. Anuman is inference. If something has happened which cannot be explained without the existence of God, we will believe that there is God. Upaman by comparison, by comparison of qualities that, okay, these, these are the good qualities in humans and these, these are the bad qualities in humans and no one can possess the, all the good qualities, but there will be someone who will possess all the good qualities. So the one having all the good qualities is God. So that is Upaman through comparison or analogy. Through postulation. So for example, we come to find something which is unexplained, which cannot be explained. Then through postulation and with the best of our knowledge, we think that no human can do it. So 
God have done it. So that is God. If there is no explanation for something, anupalabdi, right? If no explanation is upalabdi, if explanation is not there for the thing, we understand that because we cannot explain it, God will be behind it. Apart from that, there is shabd, like Vedas and Puranas, authoritative texts have said that there is God, and because they are authoritative, they are authoritative because they meet with the first five and six standards, right? Then we consider it as authenticity. Authentic. So these six modes of proving is generally accepted. Now every scholar, right? Either they have accepted all five of these as reasonable, or few of these as reasonable. No one have taken everything is reasonable. Someone will say that they only shabd and anuman is true. Others we don't believe as a proof, right? So logic is something, my friend, that is again to be shastrically learned. Nowadays, the problem is that people who talk logic know nothing about logic. Right? Anuman, Praman, Shabd, Anupalabdi. <laughs> These things, so I think they are listening for the first time. Right? So because we don't have a Shabd, like I cannot say we don't have a Shabd regarding Ketu. We don't have a classical saying regarding Ketu. We have it. I will come to it. Right. But, but the point that I was wanting to make that everyone in the astrological world is putting some bizarre kind of logic. And like if the son is the significator for father and uh, because father is the ruler, son is also the significator of ruler. Son is a significator of ruler because son is told to be a ruler, not because father is the ruler of the home or things like that. In this particular scenario, if father and grandfather both are living, grandfather will be ruler. So you will take son as the significator for grandfather or what? So only those people who have not learned the Shastra properly and who don't have any experience regarding the Shastra will want to justify themselves with logic. Anyone who have sufficient experience of practice, they will not want to justify anything related to logic. Because logically, looking at male and female body, male and female should be equal. I am not saying that they are unequal. But I am also saying that they are not equals. That they are not unequal, neither equal. Something is there that I will not explain. Right? What is my take on it or opinion on it? But the basic point is that this particular approach that is there in astrology that I will accept things only when it is logical. First of all, those who are explaining using logic, they are doing it because of lack of experience. That is point number one. That is very certain, very firm. Secondarily, regarding you will accept things with respect to logic. First of all, know what is logic. Learn the logic shastra properly. Right? Learn the pramana shastra properly. Then we will talk about it. Right? So, first of all, this particular approach that is being taken is not good, is not conducive, is not the approach of a student. Right? Because one thing is there. I am liable to answer to students. Right? Now, any student... Their first thing is if teacher is saying something, they should accept it. Right? So if you are wanting the teacher to prove something, you are not accepting his statement and you are not accepting the statement. That means you disqualify as a student in the first place. Logic why you should give God knows. Right? This is another point that needs to be understood. Right? That this is not the approach of seeking logic. Sometimes people are like, you know, this person is saying this, sir, that person is saying this, sir. My point is very simple. If someone have learned, see, mind is a, you know, there, there is a saying that we have heard in childhood. That mind is a pot. And in a pot, a certain amount of water can only be filled. When the pot is already filled with water, you want to pour more water, that water will go out. So in the case, you have a lot of opinions. You know about a lot of opinions. Your mind is already filled with a lot of opinions. My answer will be just another opinion. And I just don't want to give you just another opinion to confuse you further. So either you take my full statement or if you're like, he have said this, he have said this, that go to he and they. Don't listen to me. Don't follow my words. As simple as that, my friend, I don't want to make a point for myself. Right. <clears throat> this also you understand. You will understand it. There will be clarity 
in your astrological learning or any type of learning in the world, there will be a clarity in that only if you understand these things. That's the first point. Let's understand. Secondarily, regarding Rahu and Ketu, regarding the beneficence of Ketu, if you talk about the experience, according to my experience, I have seen Ketu to behave benefic, behave like benefic in horoscopes. Now you cannot say that I have Ketu in 7th house, my marital life is bad, so why are you saying Ketu, good Ketu is bad, sir, only? No. No. Ketu by nature is a planet which will give detachment and loss of things. So Ketu in 7th house will produce divorce or separation. It does not make Ketu a malefic at all. Jupiter in 7th house being Digbalheen will also cause divorce. So will you say Jupiter is a malefic or what? So first of all, based on one horoscope, two horoscope, three horoscope, you cannot draw conclusion. Based on past events that have happened, you cannot draw conclusion. People say, my Ketu Dasha was there. Ketu Dasha was very bad. Are, bhai, there are 300 Dashas in astrology. How many you know? How many you applied? Nothing. Dasha, that software calculates that we have applied. It does not work this way. Right? So you have 50 horoscopes with same ascendant, same planetary setup. Right? 10 horoscopes. 25 horoscopes with Ketu in the 7th house, 25 horoscopes without Ketu in the 7th house and all other setups same. You analyze, you will understand what I am trying to say. So from my experience, I am saying it, that is point number one. Point number two, if you see this astrological hierarchy, astrology is not bound to a religion, community, state, city, area, etc. at all. So what should be understood is that, for example, males and females logically should be equal. Now in some cities, countries, what in some city, in some country, female population is more, somewhere it is less, that is another point. But basically they should be in equal quantity. Right? Or a little bit more or less. Total planets are nine. Nine is an odd number. It cannot be divided equally. So half of it will be four and a half will be half for nine. Right. So out of the nine planets, four should be either male or female and five should be the either category male or female. Now, if you, if you see in this particular setup, sun is a male, Jupiter is a male. Right. Mars is a male. These three male planets, you know, right. Now regarding Mercury and Saturn, we are confused because they are Yunuch. Regarding Rahu Ketu also, we are confused that they are Yunuch. Now Saturn, because of the nature, behavior, tendency of the planet, because all the male planets are also cruel planets, male is related to cruelty, all the male Rashi is cruel Rashi. So keeping in mind that Saturn is a cruel planet, Saturn should be taken as male. Later time, in later classics, Saturn is also considered as a male Yunuch. However, later classics or C-grade classics, I don't consider them very authentic. C-grade classic is a classic which have opinion from multiple systems without establishing the opinion of the author. The C-grade classic, which only have opinions, no conclusion or no definitive answer. At one place, they will say this planet is good. At another place, they will say this planet is bad. This way, the classic becomes unauthentic for me. This is the point. Now regarding Rahu Ketu using the same thing. Rahu Ketu is not told to be Yunuch. Is neither told to be a female nor told to be a male. But Rahu is told male in some authoritative classics. Rahu is told as a male. As giving male child and as giving male siblings. So for that reason I take Rahu as male. So now Saturn... Sun, Mars, Jupiter, Rahu, these five planets have become male. Now sixth planet cannot be male, then it will be a disbalance. So the remaining four planets are female. Venus, Moon, Ketu and Mercury. They become female. So if you see everything, there have they have to be in equal quantity. For example, if you say there are 
gunas are there, three gunas are there. So there is an equal division between it, right? So three planets are sattva guna, two are rajas guna, two are tamas guna. Because sattva guna is more prevailing because only because of sattva guna the world is sustaining. So three planets indicate sattva guna, but the total Rashi comes to four only. Because sun, moon rules one, one Rashi, Jupiter rules two Rashi. Remaining, there are two Rasic planets and two, two Tamsic planets. They will be ruling two, two Rashis each. So it is an equal balance. The three Gunas are equally divided into 12 Rashis, right? Equal division is there in the world. Based on the standard and the, based on the most standard concept, most balanced concept, the division is made. Right? This is the basic astrological understanding or basic understanding of any subject for that matter. When you deal such a technical subject, this is how you got to deal it. So coming to benefits and malefics, either there have to be four benefics or four malefics. And five others should be benefic or five others should be malefic. Right? Good. Now come to planet. Sun is a cruel planet, malefic planet. Mars is a malefic planet. Saturn is a malefic planet. These three are the malefic planets. We know that. Right? Apart from that, Mercury with a malefic can turn out to be malefic. Moon very close to sun will become a malefic. So they are occasional malefics. So 50% of the time they will be malefic. So after these three malefics, sun, Mars and Saturn, one you add for Mercury and moon, 50-50% they will become malefic. Add 50-50 to make one, four malefics are already there. Now Rahu is considered to be a malefic because it is clearly told to be a malefic. One more thing is there. Why our planet is malefic? Because they indicate things which is not liked by us. Why Mercury is not considered a permanent malefic? Because Mercury indicates intelligence and intelligence cannot be bad. Sun is a malefic because sun is ego, ego is bad. Mars is malefic because Mars indicates anger, anger is a bad tendency. Saturn is malefic because Saturn is tamshik. He indicates laziness. That is a bad tendency. So planet indicating bad things are malefic planets because they indicate bad things. They are malefic. When these things will realize, bad results will happen. So keeping in mind all the things that Rahu indicates, it is suitable that to take Rahu as a malefic. So now there are five malefics. Now to create an equal balance, you will have to take Ketu as benefic. Otherwise, there will be no balance. Let's also understand the point. First of all, malefics are Sun malefic, Mars malefic, Saturn malefic, right? Three planets. They will be situated in three houses. Then they will be aspecting. Sun will have one aspect, Mars will have two aspects, Saturn will have two aspects. Nine aspects are there, 12 houses are there in the horoscope, eight aspects are these. In this, Mercury and Rahu is also malefic. One house Rahu will be situated in ninth house. Three houses Rahu will be expecting. 10, 11, 12, 12 houses are covered. In that, Moon has occasional malefic and Mercury is occasional malefic. They will be situated in a house. They will be expecting one house. So, 13, 14, 15, 16 houses together. In this 16 houses, you also take Ketu as a malefic. So 17 houses in horoscope will be afflicted by malefics. 12 houses are there. So there will be no house in any horoscope without malefic influence. That means no one is enjoying anything in the world. This is the normal setup. Now, of course, many planets can be conjoined together. Their aspects will be falling in the same house. As one house gets more malefic influences, the results become worse and uh, the results become bad, worst, very bad, very pathetic, problematic, etc., etc. More adjectives you can add to it. So keep the balance intact. You will have to take Ketu as benefic. If I have to give you logic, this is not logic. This is understanding of the basic element. Why it is not logic? Because when I am telling you that all the planets are equally segregated, all the Rashis are equally segregated, right? If there are three type of Rashis, movable, fixed and dual, all the 12 Rashis are equally divided into it. It is not like four signs are movable. 
three signs are dual and five signs are fixed. This is not the case. Equal division is there because proper balance, proper balance between all the elements is what created this world. Later on, disruption happened. That's another thing that you see with yoga and other combinations that are present in the horoscope. Right. So this is not logic. This is the basic tattva, fundamental understanding of astrology. And how do you know that it is fundamental understanding, not a logic? Because it can be replicated everywhere. Logic cannot be replicated. The science behind logic of the Anuman Praman that I have told you that can be replicated, but logic cannot be replicated. If you say by logic that looking at humans, we find that males Females in childhood grow faster, males in childhood grow slower, but eventually male happens to have more broad shoulders as compared to female. This is logical point, right? Then you cannot apply it to all the human king, all the animal kingdom. In some animals, females are bigger, males are smaller. In some animals, males are bigger, females are smaller. So logical deduction cannot be applied everywhere. There is a good story I have heard. That once there was a great mathematician, he was taking his five children somewhere with his wife. In between, there was a river because he was a great mathematician. He found out the average of the depth of the water of that river. And after finding it out and finding that the average of the children is greater than the average of the depth of the water, they started crossing it. The youngest child was getting blown away with the waters. So his wife told him from the behind that average does not work in reality. Right? The height of the child is lower than the height of the water. Average does not work. Right? So this average is also like logic. If I give, a, if I make an average sized shirt for everyone, how many people in the world will fit into it? I don't know. There is nothing average. Right? This is good mathematical jargon used to find things. Right? but not used to prove things, used to find things, not to prove things, right? You have to, you got to understand this point. Every science and everything have uses at appropriate places, right? Understand this thing. So the same goes with logic also. Logic, the replication of logic cannot be done. And I always jokingly say one thing, Saturn is told to be Mand. I told in the previous video. Mand means slow. So people deduce out of it that because Saturn is slow, it delays things, right? Saturn is slow, month, it will delay thing, it will delay marriage and it will delay the result. Why? Why you are saying that this slow is in timing of event only, this slow is in happening only. Why you are not tying this month to mean month buddhi, which means dull minded. Why you are taking it as mandagati only, which means slow moving? Why you are not taking this mand as mandajatragani, which will mean low digestion, not a slow digestion? Why? Is this not a lack of knowledge and understanding? I don't understand what it is. But people somehow, however, I don't want to talk more about it. Logical deductions are not very dependable as such. This have to be understood. People who cannot differentiate how to use the month of Saturn talk logic. So based on experience, based on the fundamental understanding of astrology, Ketu should be taken as malefic. Based on my experience, it should be taken as benefic, sorry, should be taken as benefic. And most importantly, in a Jaimini Sutras, you see, Germany have said Atr Shubh Ketu. Atr means now onwards. Shubh Ketu means Ketu is Shubh beneficial auspicious. Now, keeping in mind all the opinions, I take Germany opinion to be most authentic. Germany is the most authentic and accurate system. Students who have learned Germany from myself will take will Germany from me take a pledge that this way around that sir Germany is the easiest to predict and all the predictions come very true. Right, Germany is simplest, 
most accurate system much confusion is not there to the point straight and because the results from gemini astrology matches with utmost maximum accuracy as compared to any system in horoscopes as per experience from experience also gemini should be taken as most authentic most authoritative also keeping in mind that gemini have not elaborated complete of aura shastra but have commented on selected things only his comments his shlokas should be given at most importance because he is adding things only from his experience and not transforming the complete shastra at all so because gemini says atra shubh ketu and all sources which say ketu is a malefic are less authentic and less creditable as compared to gemini both by their historicity and both by actual practical experience as well going with ketu going with gemini ketu should be taken as beneficial rest one one thing comes to my mind our hindi teacher used to tell us in school that there was some beautiful lady in the class he was used to say in his school time and everyone was trying to impress the lady by something something giving something and offering something this and my hindi teacher was not having anything so because he was very much interested in hindi urdu and shayari and all of that so he said to the lady but these people can say one two couplets on you i will i can tell complete poem on you and ye tujh pe ek do share karenge main puri ghazal kah dunga so on this why ketu should be taken as a benefic how it is to be taken on a benefic taking all 5000 6000 horoscopes i can explain it at length but if you follow me if you consider me as authentic source then just saying that i take ketu is as, as a benefic is enough and if you have doubt if you are collecting multiple opinions then pardon me i don't want to overburden you with one of one new opinion of mine don't follow and folded request don't follow right so ketu should be taken as a benefit ketu is considered a yonuch but as i told you in my experience ketu should be taken to be female so connected to third house it gives female sibling connected to fifth house it gives female child connected to fourth house it makes mother very female like god fearing caring etc connected to ninth house it makes father female like now a female like father will be the one who is afraid of the responsibilities etc in female horoscope if the ketu is connected to seventh house because the female will want the life partner to be a male it does indicate that life partner may have less physical strength less aggression life partner can be lazy ignorant etc in male horoscope ketu connected to seventh house makes spouse very female like so having sweet voice soft skin prominent female characteristics as a prominent female body parts etc will be there when ketu is connected to 7th house gender wise ketu should be taken to be a female people from lowest lowest most start of society and people who are born from parents coming from two different these two different descent coming from two different religions coming from two different countries people born of mixed race and the lowest most start of the society outcast people are indicated by ketu so helping them donating them helping them you can help them by giving knowledge giving money or giving anything so helping them in any way will be a good remedy for ketu when ketu indicate gain of anything the gain will be through these people these type of these types of people when you want to get any remedy etc done for ketu if you get it done by these people it will be best when ketu is the most powerful planet in the kendras of horoscope when ketu is in the ascendant when ketu is in the navams ascendant when ketu is with moon in navams then ketu gives looks etc like him to you apart from that if ketu is connected to 7th house spouse gets the looks etc of the ketu connected to 5th house children gets the looks etc of the ketu so on and so forth so 
तो केतु गिव्स रेड एंड फियर्स लुक एंड बिकॉज इट गिव्स रेड लुक इन कॉम्प्लेक्शन इट गिव्स व्हाइट कॉम्प्लेक्शन रेड इज व्हाइट अ पर्सन विथ अ व्हाइट स्किन टोन यू यू नो यू प्रेस देम वेरी टाइटली यू लीव योर हैंड यू विल सी बॉडी पार्ट विल बिकम रेड तो व्हाइट कॉम्प्लेक्शन इट गिव्स the person looks very fierce and very aggressive in a person you know if this eyebrow is very arched the lips are very sharp the jaw line is very sharp the person will look like he's aggressive right so that look it gives when a mustang person will say things which easily hurts people this is also trait of ketu elevated body as in broad shoulders broad chest you know hands like you know away from the body this type of body is given by ketu generally this person is armed or have things with him that can harm people they keep things with themselves for the purpose of protection outcast people right people who inhale smoke smokers people who have bruised limbs is indicated by ketu ketu generally gives a lean figure and ketu makes the person very malicious as if the person is malicious in thinking the person is malicious in their activity people who love residing in forest people who love living alone people who try to avoid human contact is also indicated by ketu so this trait will come to life partner if ketu is connected to 7th house comes to you if ketu is connected to ascendant comes to your child if ketu is connected to fifth house comes to your sibling if ketu is connected to third house comes to your mother if ketu is connected to fourth house comes to your father if ketu is connected to ninth house corners of house is indicated by ketu so if you want to improve your ketu keeps the corner of the house is clean and well lit that will be good like rahu ketu also indicates south west direction so when ketu is connected to seventh house you will get your spouse in south west direction when ketu is connected to Seventh Lord, you will meet your life partner in southwest direction of the city, country, etc. When Ketu is connected to tenth house or tenth Lord, your office will be in the southwest direction from your home or in the southwest direction of the city. If your office is not there, but Ketu is connected to tenth house and tenth Lord, Ketu will create problems in your job. Ketu will create problems in your enjoyment, uh, employment. This is how this should be understood. If you want to do remedy related to Ketu, because Ketu also indicates south. west direction basically ketu indicates upwards and downward direction upward direction in fact but you cannot have your office upward so in that particular scenario i am taking the direction of the direction practically the direction of rahu southwest itself should be taken so if you want to do some remedy related to ketu doing it in the southwest direction will be good now as i told you that ketu indicates upward direction living in a high rise building activates ketu right if someone is living just below their home or someone is living at an upper floor and have their shop in the ground floor of the house etc this is also indicated by ketu mud vessel is indicated by ketu donation of mud vessel uses of mud vessel for consuming food should be done for ketu you will use mud vessel for consumption of food you will activate your ketu you will donate mud vessel you will remedy your ketu right blue sapphire is indicated for ketu though for ketu cat eye is taken So in gemstone cat's eye should be worn but neelam or blue sapphire is also told to be classically told to be worn for ketu so that can also be worn if ketu is indicating any event in prashna that event will happen in 3 months right because ketu rules the time period of 3 months so you say in prashna 7th house is good it is indicating marriage and ketu is situated in the 7th house so in 3 months it should give marriage ketu is friendly with venus ketu is very friendly with saturn with venus and saturn ketu is very friendly right apart from that ketu is also very ketu is also friendly with sun moon and mars sun moon mars and mercury in my experience i have seen ketu with jupiter is very good because ketu is also see friendship between planets is because of common traits common interest of the planet right two planets have common interest they will become friendly as as two people with common interest become friendly to each other no this is the basic logic so ketu have in in indicating shikha very good with jupiter with sun and moon ketu generally does not harm sun and moon only ketu just with sun or moon is not a grahan yog right 
Sun and moon should be together. Sun and moon should be in one seven to each other, and both of them should be with Rahu and Ketu. Only then it will be Grahan. Except for Grahan condition, Ketu is also okay, okay with sun and moon. Does not create much harm as such because Ketu is taken as a benefit. So does not create much harm to Jupiter. It is it is very beneficial, very good to Jupiter. Regarding Mercury, Mercury is a planet who does not want to take responsibility. Ketu gives you detachment. So in giving result, Ketu Mercury is very bad. Apart from that, Ketu being a benefic planet, he will not disturb the things related to Mercury as such. But these fundamental behavioral differences between Ketu and Mercury will be problematic. That needs to be understood. With Mars, Ketu, Ketu have a nature very similar to Mars. Ketu is also very fierce, indicating fire, hurts, wounds, attacks, etc. So Ketu is very good with Mars. But because Ketu and Mars indicate the same things and they are negative, and of fire, violence, attacks, wounds, etc. This combination is not very good for the native, not very good for the house, house and the Rashi where it is, uh, where it is falling, because then that house and Rashi will suffer a lot. Right? With Venus, Ketu is good, does not create much problem as such. Right? With Saturn also, Ketu is fine. Now Saturn, because Saturn indicates laziness. And Ketu is disinterested planet. Ketu is Udasi in a Graha. Disinterested planet. Ketu indicates disinterest. Now Saturn's laziness and disinterest of Ketu makes sure that first of all, the person will show laziness to do things. Later on, he will lose interest. It's not very conducive for things to happen. So the combination is not very suitable as such. So these Ketu with Mercury and Ketu with Saturn is something that is not very good. Right? Ketu is a dark planet, does indicate that a weak and afflicted and a malefic Ketu will lead to confusions in doing anything. So if you, that's why I told you reading of Shastras and all of that, right? What is Praman and how something is considered as authentic, Praman, Anuman, etc. How do you know it by reading Shastras? So as you read Shastras, confusion that is indicated by Ketu will be dispelled. That is a good remedy. Otherwise, a weak and afflicted Ketu generally indicates person being confused. Reasons around mountains and forest is indicated by Ketu. So you want to do remedy related to Ketu, do it near mountains and forests. If Ketu is connected to 7th house, 7th Lord, you will meet your life partner or propose your life partner, get married near mountains and forests, etc. This way it should be understood. Ketu indicates a very old person between 70 to 100 years of age. So when anything is in Anything is indicated by Ketu that this thing will happen because of Ketu. It will generally happen with the help of people between 70 to 100 years of age. Right? When Ketu is afflicted in transit, it generally indicates that problems will happen to humans. Humans will die. There will be wars, fights, diseases, etc. Because Ketu also indicates humans. In gemstone, Ketu indicates lapis lazuli. So wearing lapis lazuli, donating lapis lazuli is a good remedy for Ketu. Maternal grandfather is also indicated by Ketu. So if you want to know about maternal grandfather, you should analyze Ketu. In the last degrees of any Rashi, last degree is not like Rahu and Ketu go retrograde. So last degree will be 0 to 1 degree. No, Rishi counts and I also count in the correct way. So last degree means 27, 28, 29 degrees only. In the last degrees of any Rashi, Ketu and Rahu specifically, Ketu should be considered to be good. In Virgo, Taurus, Sagittarius, Ketu is considered as powerful. In night time, Ketu is considered as powerful. So someone is born in night time, Ketu should be considered as powerful. If Ketu is giving some result, that will happen in night time. If birth happens at the time of eclipse, etc. Or at the time of eclipse, Ketu automatically becomes powerful. So if Ketu is indicating some result, it should happen in eclipse, near to eclipse. Sometimes what happens at the birth time of a person, some Strange phenomena such as thundering, rising of rainbow, etc., is witnessed. If such thing happens, the astrologer should note it, the mother and father should take a note of it because if the birth happens at a time when there is occurrence of some special phenomena, it makes Ketu powerful, it makes Ketu strong, it does indicate that for this native, for this horoscope, Ketu is prominent. Right? If Ketu is connected to seventh house, etc., then you will meet your spouse near such circumstances, when such circumstances are happening this way, it should be understood. Problems related to itching 
outbreak of smallpox plans of enemy for destructing you becoming uh, destroying your uh, creating problems in your life becoming successful diseases in general and problems because of low caste out outer class people and foreigners is indicated by ketu so when ketu is negative these problems it will create outsiders any type of outsiders buddhists jainas or anyone who is not of your religion is indicated by rahu and ketu both snake catchers as ram wolf camel serpent places enveloped in darkness mosquito bugs insects owls are indicated by ketu so when ketu is negative these people these animals will create a problem and if you help if you help rescue and do things positive things for these people and animals you will be pacifying your ketu the sense of touch is also indicated by ketu so when ketu is afflicted and ketu is giving bad result the sense of touch will be lost and as i told you in the previous video that sense of touch being lost also means that person does not feel pain etc in normal intensity they are in, they are tolerant to pain because of which they can cause much damage to themselves as compared to what others will do loss of touch etc also gives sexual problems such as erectile dysfunction etc so these issues are also indicated by rahu and ketu horse gram grain is indicated by ketu so donation of horse gram should be done for ketu consumption of horse gram will activate your ketu clamp of tree or bushes are indicated by ketu so if this is growing around a house or property you should know that ketu is very prominent in this house or property now only purchase that house and property when ketu is beneficial for you otherwise not the matas incarnation of sri vishnu is indicated by ketu so worshiping matas avatar of sri vishnu is a good remedy for ketu that is first thing and secondarily because matas avatar of uh, sri vishnu is indicated by ketu feeding fishes taking care of fishes will make sure that you make your ketu good you keep fish aquarium in your home it will make sure that your ketu is activated accordingly all the significations should be understood my purpose behind doing this series was to give course level knowledge so see what i teach in my courses i don't teach in my youtube videos or write in my articles at all i highly respect my students who learn from me and i believe that they should have high class content which no one deserves except for them so the techniques etc that you see in youtube videos and on articles is a teaser like if i plan for a course so i plan that this is very important technique this is very important technique in this list because you see time is limited so i know that 15 classes i am going to do two two and a half hour each classes i teach so 15 classes i am going to do course will be around 30 40 hours for that 40 hours i take the content i take the content out that this content i am going to teach this is very important this is very good this works so miraculously in predictions after that some principles are there that these principles also work not as important or as powerfully as the principles that i am going to teach in the course but somehow work this somehow principles i present in youtube videos and articles to be very honest with you so the thing is not up to the level of courses as such to be very honest and frank with you right but with this series my purpose was to teach class level of knowledge on youtube to give a glimpse regarding what it is learning astrology properly right so my intention with this particular series is that you will take note of each and everything that is taught you will take note of how it is told to be taught what how it is told to be used by myself and using your own knowledge and understanding and experience on horoscopes you will further add to it and use it in your horoscopic analysis for your benefit this is my purpose thank you for watching